Hey y'all, it's Jessica from Pretty Prints and Paper, and recently I posted this heart that I did as a silent auction item for my friend. It was to raise money for some um, Latina, Latino scholarships, and I didn't really know what to do. I had this wooden heart, and she just asked me to create something, and in two hours I kind of experimented with a galaxy heart with the words nevertheless she persisted on it and i posted to instagram and um it was a big hit and people wanted a tutorial on it so here i am um be fair warned i don't normally work with acrylic paint in this way so this is just literally me playing around here's how i did it so I had that wooden heart and I have a flat piece of canvas today. I got this at Michael's, but I've also gotten some from Daiso. So if you're nearby a Daiso, it's like $1.50 for one or two of them. So check that out. At Michael's, it's pretty reasonably priced, especially if you use that $40 or 40% 40 off coupon. I'm using Liquitex liquid acrylic ink. And it, I normally use it for calligraphy, but it's a really watery acrylic. So I'm playing around with that. Thicker than watercolor and more vibrant, so um, I can get some cool um, colors from that. And I have a mini mister that I got from Michaels. This is to help the, and the ink run together. This is a round number two brush. Of course, you can use any brush that you think is appropriate for whatever you're gonna letter on top of the galaxy. I have this white Uniball Signo pen to help thicken up some of the stars that I'll be doing. I have some white gouache that I'll be using on this toothbrush to get the star effect. And lastly, I'm gonna letter on top with this silver fine tech paint on top. So um, here we go, let's play around. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you lay down some plastic or newspaper. Um, the liquid acrylic is really, really wet and will soak through anything. You should see my desk even after I did this. Uh, the first thing I do is I squirt on the lighter colors first and give them a chance to kind of soak into the canvas before I put on any of the darker ones. There's not really any pattern or anything that I'm following. I'm just filling in some of the blank spaces. I like to put some more on the edges because it's harder to cover up the edges and you'll see why in a second. And now that I've done this a couple times, you actually don't need to use this much paint. You can use a little less than this. What you're going to see me do is tilt the canvas around a little bit to get the colors mixing together. And then what you're going to see me do is blow on it. So it pushes all of the liquid together and you can kind of see how the process is very messy, but it's not any kind of special technique that I'm using. I'm just blowing around the ink, um, getting it to cover up some of the edges first before I get to the middle parts. I kind of am blowing on the canvas in short, powerful bursts to get the white spots cover it up. And now you see why I added the lighter colors first because very quickly the ink gets pretty dark. Since the dark colors kind of take over, I tend to fill in some of these white spots with the lighter ink. If you find that the ink is having a hard time coming together, I use the mister to kind of pull the ink together.
Oh, there I am. I wouldn't worry too much if there are some tiny white spots, just because you can kind of play those off like bigger stars in the galaxy. Just get some of the bigger ones covered up. And at the end, you can always take some of those lighter colors and just drop them along the top, and then you blow on it to kind of create a little wispy patch of that lighter color, especially if it's the teal or the light pink. Now that there's so much paint on here, I kind of uh, take a wet paper towel and start to dab at the excess paint. I try to use as flat of a uh, surface as possible from the paper towel just so that you can get this cool cosmic effect. It adds some texture to the work itself, which you can kind of see reflected in the work there. So now I'm taking my paint over to the hair dryer and I set it on a low heat setting and a low air setting just to get the ink to dry a little bit faster. Uh, I'm not pushing the paint around at all, I'm just getting the ink to dry up. And now you're ready to put some white paint on top. So clear away this hot ass mess and get ready with a toothbrush and some white paint. I'm using gouache, but you can use any acrylic paint that you have. I put a little bit of it on the toothbrush and I add a little bit of water. I use the spray a little bit to, to wet it before I just use my thumb and just flicker on the paint. And once again, I'm going to take it to my hair dryer just to get that paint to set a little bit before I letter on it. To letter, I'm using a white colored pencil and just sketching very lightly where I want the letters to go. And the, the spacing on this, you might want to practice on another sheet of paper, cut the same size. Um, I'm kind of eyeballing it before I letter on it with my fine tech paint. I'm using a round two brush and I, this is the first time I'm using this pan, so I'm just putting water into it. With this Fine Tech palette, you just have to really mix the colors in together so that you have enough ink for your brush. If you want to learn more about lettering with a brush, I do some uh, tutorials with a brush pen, and it's a very similar method where you push down and pull up. Um, with thicker downstrokes and thin upstrokes. With a paintbrush, it takes a couple tries over and over to kind of get the opacity that you want, which is what I'm finding with this. Sometimes you need more water, and so it's all kind of an experiment as to how thick you want the paint to be. Random Olive also does some awesome tutorials specifically on lettering with a paintbrush, if you want to check her out. I've tried this also with some Hydrus watercolors in Dr. P.H. Martin's, just to add some fun color to it, and those are watercolors, and that becomes difficult, I found out, not from the galaxy part of things, but with the lettering part of things. When I put the fine tech over the galaxy, it was picking up a lot of the watercolor color, so this blue was seeping into the silver. So learn from my mistakes. You don't need to put watercolors into your acrylic before you letter on top of it. And in the end you will have this awesome piece that you can do whatever you want with, hang it up, give it to a friend, or I'm selling them uh, to raise some money for ACLU. I will donate some of the proceeds I make from that to that organization. If you're interested, you let me know. Email me at jessica at prettyprintsandpaper.com. Otherwise, that's what I've got for you today. If you um, have other ideas for tutorials, let me know. So if you like it, give me a thumbs up, share it, or save it, or pin it, whatever. As I just hope that you enjoy it. So um, that's all I've got for you today. I will see you in my next video. Bye!